Paying cash for your next car? You don't say, I'm paying cash the moment you walk into a car dealer. Great news. The Homer Guy team is back today with a lot of new information for cash car buyers and some master negotiating tips from our expert negotiator, Elizabeth. It's going to be amazing. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as the Homer Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Today's cash video is brought to you by the Homer Guy team home of super high intensity training for car buyers and a witty group of auto experts to boot. If you appreciate us working hard to bring you up to speed with our great videos and you want to support our efforts, well, there's plenty of ways for you to get on board and show us a little appreciation. Well, you can start by recommending us to your friends and help us get to that 1 million subscriber mark. Before we dig into today's video, I wanted to give you a quick update. We posted last week that one of our youngest members of the homework guy team was seriously ill and had to be hospitalized. There was an amazing response from our loyal followers. Here's this little gal, affectionately nicknamed Beanie because of her love of coffee. She'd literally come down the steps in the morning and say, coffee, rub it her eyes. Well, I'm letting all of you know that she's out of the woods now, feeling like herself once again. Thanks for all of your kind words, your thoughts and prayers on her behalf. We appreciate all of you more than you know. Thank you. Today, we're delighted to be back on this subject of cash buyers. You see, the more cash buyers there are, the more the car business has to change to a better business environment for everyone. Cash is their kryptonite because it defeats a lot of nonsense in the finance office. Okay, a quick recap, and then we get back to the new stuff. You don't walk into a dealership and say, I'm paying cash. If you didn't already know, you might ask, well, why not? I thought cash was king. Okay, it's true that a few dealers do like cash for their cars, but we're here to address the bulk of what's true in the car business. The dealers who have a finance office, peddle loans and products, and push dealer fees on you, those dealers generally do not like cash buyers. The reason is simple. They want car loans. Let me give you an example of why. If I tell you that I'm going to give you $500, it's a simple transaction. Here's the $500, bucks, done deal. But if I tell you, just give me $30 a month for the next two years, and I get you to focus on that little monthly payment, you might not run the math and realize I'm charging you $720 for the 500 bucks I gave you. The exact same thing is true in a car dealership. When you finance, they love you because they can stuff a ton of fat in the way of products, fees, and packed interest rates on a car loan. And many of you don't really notice that the monthly payment suddenly made your car cost 150% or 200% of the price you started with. Loans give dealers a smokescreen to put tons of things on you. Cash doesn't. When you say I'm paying cash, when you walk in that front door, you're letting the dealer know that they'll miss out on a huge chunk of their profits in the finance office, so they stick it to you on the price of the car. A lot of cash buyers are paying higher prices instead of lower prices on cars and wondering why. Patty A. writes, I did this years ago, meaning she told the dealer she was paying cash. Lesson learned. I thought it would make my life easier if I had told them I had no trade-in and I was paying cash. Well, never again. Patty learned the hard way. That doesn't have to be you. You must keep your cash options to yourself. At first, anyway. This brings up several of the follow-up questions we've had from approximately 8 million viewers who have commented on our previous editions of cash-based videos. For example, if you don't tell them you're paying cash up front, when do you tell them you're paying cash? Or, if you're trying to keep this a secret, won't they just keep hassling you until you tell them how you're paying for the car? And what tips do you have for this? To answer these questions, I've brought in Elizabeth today. All of you have wanted to see her again anyway, and Elizabeth is one of the fiercest negotiators on the Homework Guy team. Hundreds of car deals she has participated in, and tons of amazing car deals under her belt. I want you to pay close attention to the words that she uses. Kind of like trained word tracks a salesman is using on you, well, Elizabeth knows exactly what to say to shut down a salesman who won't stop asking, how are you going to pay? She knows exactly what to tell the finance officer when she decides to pay cash. If you've seen her on previous videos, you know you're in for a treat. Elizabeth, first of all, thanks for joining me on camera. We're all aware here on the Homer Guy team that you like to play that behind the scenes role, but 
you got a lot of fans out there now uh, <laughs> since they saw you on the show. Well, that's flattering. Um, I just do my best. I want to start with this. Some salesmen say they'd kick a car buyer like you out of the dealership immediately, like as if they don't want to put up with a customer who essentially drives the deal like you do. Oh, I see those comments too, and they're not true. I have never been asked to leave a dealership, and I've done this hundreds of times, either for myself or for our followers or with members of the Homework Guy team. Right. Um, never once been asked to leave. What do you think that is? Do you think it gives you an advantage being female, or do you think it's just how you handle the situation? Oh, well, you have to know exactly what you want. So let me start with that. And it's, you have to be respectful, but firm. Um, I just don't want anybody to lead me around and tell me what to think. That, and that's true of anything I buy. It's not just a car, um, which is a big decision, but I for sure don't let anyone manipulate me with a bunch of nonsense. But I can't overstate how important it is that I do my homework first. Everybody needs to do that. <laughs> uh, uh, even with what I do know about car shopping, I'm not on their lot without a few hours of research under my belt on the specific vehicle or if there's laws in the area that That's are going to affect the deal. Yep. Um, and if I'm just shopping used cars, which is definitely the smartest way to go for buyers, I always know what the cash value is of the vehicle. You have to have that information. And with that math, you know exactly what's a fair price. We just covered how to do the cash value on a recent video. And so I'm not going to spend a lot of detail on that now, but just take a couple of minutes and just explain it and give it a brush over. Okay. Well, get out pen and paper. Um, you need the VIN number, the year, the make, model, trim level, color, and miles of the car. Um, and no matter what you're car shopping for, um, this is the information that's easy to get. So you go to Kelly Blue Book's website, click the option for a cash offer, and mm -hmm. you put your contact information in. And for a little bit of privacy, I use a Google voice number and an email that I set up for car shopping um, so that when they call me back, I don't have to answer them. <laughs> right. But within minutes, I have a cash offer from Kelly. And then actually not long after, several dealers will email me saying that they want that car for that amount. So it pretty much tells you that they're interested in a car for the cash value. So that everyone's clear on this, you're talking about the car you're shopping for. So you're taking a car right yeah. off a dealer's lot, putting it into Kelly like it's a car you own, and Kelly sends you a cash offer. Right. You can just take the information off any vehicle. They don't have no idea if it's yours or not. And you just punch it in and that's what you get back. So let's go back to why you've never been asked to leave a car lot despite how you handle the deal. <laughs> Even though salespeople will comment on our video channel that, that you'd get kicked off the lot. Do you believe that being informed, having your homework done, do you think that's key to what you do? And do you think it's key to why they don't ask you to leave? Oh, without a doubt. They just they know I'm different and they can't buffalo me. Um, and it puts them back on their heels. They're still going to sell me a car, but they're not going to sell me all the other garbage. So they keep things moving along, telling them what I want. Um, and that if we're going to do business, uh, if they follow what I'm asking for, um, I lead during the sales process and then people can't forget that. So stay on top of the salesman and the other staff and you'll get what you're looking for. You can easily be fooled by things salespeople say and do when you don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. So let's get to the question about a pesky salesman who won't stop asking you, how are you gonna pay? And you don't wanna tell them that you're paying cash. This is actually one of your favorite this questions. This is my favorite, it's like the mic drop. Yes. Um, okay, so you never mention you're paying cash until the very end. And if they pester me about how I plan to pay, I just have a simple response. I say, look, I never talk about payment options or financial history out in the open. I wanna be in an office where it's private, and, but even before that, is the car the price that I'm willing to pay? So if it's not the price I'm willing to pay, I'm not buying a car, you don't need to know my financial information. So there's no reason for you to talk payment considerations no. when you don't even know what the vehicle is yet that you're exactly. gonna get. Yep. Okay, that's a solid point that any car buyer has to uh, remember. So imagine walking around in any kind of store, shopping for anything, and somebody walks up to you and says, how do you plan to pay? It's, <laughs> it's completely an unnatural question that only people, only those in the car business ask, and they're just doing it to try to set you up for the finance office. So let me ask you this. What if they don't take a hint and they keep bugging you about payment? What are you going to pay? I'll just say it again more firmly. I've already told you that if you don't have the vehicle I want at a price I'm willing to pay, talking about payment is pointless. And what if they keep asking? You know, through the conversation, it comes up again. Oh, well, I... 
I'm still respectful, but they can see I'm getting a little irritated um, because I've communicated clearly. And at this point I say, your dealership is required by law to respect my rights to data privacy. So if you keep asking me financial questions out here on the showroom floor, that's not appropriate. And are you attempting to violate my data privacy rights? That pretty much kills it right there. <laughs> it's kind of like a like a lawyer question. <laughs> they basically are trying to bully the car buyer into following their process, aren't they? Right, but but think about something. Have you ever gone to a bank to apply for a loan? They don't just come out in the lobby and start talking to you in front of other people and have you fill out forms where people can look over your shoulder and see your you know your social security number. So if banks worked like car dealers, you'd quit going to that bank right away, and that loan officer would get fired. And no other profession gets away with doing this kind of stuff. So don't let the dealership push you into these decisions either. Your point about data privacy laws has to be a shocker for them. <laughs> exactly. Um, they aren't used to it. I actually heard a salesman say to one of the managers that I think she works for one of the state departments <laughs> or something. It's like they think I'm a mystery shopper for the attorney general's office, which is great. I get a good deal and I know they're running scared. <laughs> so at this point, uh, they could likely be a little bit worried about who you are, how you know what you know, and the conversation about paying is kind of off the table. It's off the table. That's the strength of being in control. It shakes them up, takes them off their game plan. So when do you tell them you're paying cash? At the very end. Um, so I'm in the finance office, and in some cases, I'll give the finance officer a few minutes to show me what he has, you know, and I've, I've never taken the deal they propose, never. It always has to be cleaned up first. And when I'm satisfied that everything is involved, when everything is fixed on the deal, that's what I tell them I'm paying cash. So explain what you mean by cleaning up the deal. Okay, well, when you arrive at the finance office, the person's already started loading your deal full of fees and products before you even got there. Before you get there. Yep. Um, it's part of their plan to artificially inflate the cost of the car and pack things into the deal. Um, it would be like window etching, paint protection, fabric protection, nitrogen-filled tires, gap, gap insurance, insurance, extended warranties. Oh, the list goes on. Um, so you're going to take all of that off the contract? Right. So I line out every one of those things and I tell him I want it gone. I want it gone. And if he starts to say anything, I interrupt. I said, take it off. I just want it all gone. You don't let him bully you into accepting <laughs> something. No. So, so let me clarify. You can always expect resistance because they want those extra dollars badly. But uh, don't, I don't generally get a lot of resistance in finance because think about it. The salesman and the sales manager have already been dealing with me. They know I'm a different cookie when I show up in, at their door. So this guy knows he's going to have an uphill battle with me. So. And you've been on the inside of these deals as well. You've seen it inside the dealership. You know everybody talks. Yes, exactly. Well, that's what making a deal is, is talking when your customer's not present. So, And it doesn't stop him from trying, though. But he caves in pretty quickly when he knows that everything else has failed. So the advantage is to get that control right from the start and just hold on to it and don't forget it. Um, I'm in the driver's seat and I'm not going to give up my seat now to ride shotgun with somebody who <laughs> thinks he's going to empty my pockets. Um, he's probably not going to admit it out loud to anyone, but he's already accepted defeat before I came into his office. I can just see it in his eyes. <laughs> You're dead on the money. There's a ton of communication with finance that happens during this customer interaction with the salesperson out on the yeah. showroom floor. And that's key information for all of our viewers out there to know. Be in control of your deal early. Be respectful but firm like you do it and it gets much easier in finance too right and you're kind of in that that mindset and you'll just keep yourself there um so lead stay in control don't let the finance officer take you over when you get to their office i stop them almost right away the moment i see they're going to try to go into those sales pitches <clears throat> nobody has to listen to a sales pitch for stuff you don't want to buy uh, no exactly how fast does that happen from the time you sit in finance? How fast do you shut them down? <laughs> okay, well, I usually interrupt and take control within like 30 seconds. Um, Very fast. Other times it might be a few minutes, but never more than five minutes. Um, I know that everything I'm expecting from them is reasonable, but I just don't let up on it. So that, that's key actually, knowing that it's reasonable and you're not being, you're not being a jerk customer yeah. in, in any fashion. Okay, so you give them no chance to get their hopes up or shift momentum over in their favor. Well, there's no chance for them to gain momentum with me, but yes, um, car buyers have to know that they have to shut down the nonsense lines back in sales and control the finance pre presentation right from the beginning. So in all the car deals you've worked, how often do you hear the finance officer say that you need extended warranties or gap insurance, you know, stuff like this to uh, protect your investment, <laughs> their, their favorite quote? You know, they try it every time. 
And uh, I love when they tell me I need to protect my investment and they say, oh, we're on the same page. I watch out for my investments all the time, so no worries. If the deal here isn't right, I won't be using any of my investments to buy your car today. <laughs> that's, that's really <laughs> key. So I know we have, some, we have some viewers out there who are rolling on the floor laughing right now. Hey, I know what an investment is. Investments make me money. A rapidly depreciating car um, doesn't fit that description. So what's your goal in finance? First, just get, get the junk off the contract. I line it all out. I tell them to fix it. Then I ask for the tax, title, license fees to register the vehicle to me. And I want that information right away. And they can have it just in minutes. It's all right in their system. Right. Finance officers like to fudge on these, like the taxes and state fees by estimating them. Have you had that experience? Oh, all the time. What I'll do is if I have a vehicle I'm looking at, um, specifically, I'll call the DMV office before I visit the dealership. I know exactly what the state fees are within, you know, a few dollars. And now I want the finance officer to give me that exact information. I don't accept estimates. And it's it's easy to tell the difference because an actual, you know, fee from the state has dollars and cents. Oh, dollars it. and cents every time. Yep. And I look them right in the eye and say, this is my out the door price, right? They, they love it when customers say out the door, don't they? Right. When you know the lingo. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's... It's way too far down the road at this point for them to argue with me anymore. I always get my out the door price. So a lot of customers get stuck with paying fees like delivery fees, prep fees, and you know, the all popular document fee, oh, for right. example. <laughs> well, I don't pay any of the fees with, with one exception. I'll sometimes give them $75, you know, like the homework guy teaches for the document fee if they've been nice. Um, and you have to explain to them that, you know, the document fee is just extra money going to the dealer because a dealer is asking me for the extra cash without me agreeing to it. But I don't let them change the car price by tacking on the fees. What if they claim that state law requires them to keep their fee the same? Well, that's easy. You just have to do a little wiggle with the math. If they say they have to, I have to pay $5.99 because everyone else did. Well, I just take, um, you know, $5.99 less $75 off the price of the car. And then there's your $5.99 fee, but I'm still paying the same out the door price. So what's been your experience with getting them to either remove the document fee or discount the car as you just stated? Well, I've walked a few times. Um, sometimes I'll just pick my keys up and make it look like I'm going to start, you know, to waffle. Um, the keys in your hand is that sign of control. You know, you're not trapped and they know it. And as I said before, because of the reports they got from sales when out first arrived, they knew this was going to be a tough day for them before I got to finance. So right. that helps me a lot. It gives me an edge and it's good to have a reputation of being a little tough. Have you ever had a finance officer get up and leave anytime you've been at the, I've, I've actually experienced that myself. <laughs> I'm curious if you have. Um, they say they have to go check on something, but the truth is they're terrified of smart car buyers. I think they think right. they're going to get in trouble for not selling you all the junk. Yeah. And, and they don't know where to go with you. They don't have any other game plan. Yeah. So at this point you've cleaned up the car deal and you still haven't mentioned how you're paying. Have you? No. So when the contract is clean and it's, you know, to my satisfaction and he agrees that we're looking at the out the door price, that's when I say, oh, I'm paying cash and I pull out my checkbook immediately. Uh, I don't ask for permission. It's my car deal and I just do it. And the poor fight ass guy just like plunk falls out of his chair. <laughs> you can hear a pin drop. Uh, but he pretty much knew this was coming. The, the thing car buyers have to remember is it's your car deal. You can buy right. a car the way you want to anywhere. And you owe these people nothing. You go in there, get what you want, and you don't have to put up with the nonsense. But be respectful. I never have to put up with it. A lot of questions showed up on our videos from last year about paying cash. Apparently, people have forgotten how to pay cash without having a stack of greenbacks in their hand. How do you do it? Okay, well, that's pretty simple. Um, I can carry cash on occasion, you know, up to $5,000. But my favorites are just a personal check because mm -hmm. dealers can scan it and verify the check easily. Sometimes they'll say, let's put a given amount on your debit card to verify funds, and then you put the rest in a check. So it, there's no fee for you, obviously. Um, you just have to call your banker and uh, raise the limit for the day. So they if should you're be, using the debit card. Yeah, yeah. So they can expect that a certain amount is coming through to be processed. And of course, if you're doing financing with a bank, you can also bring a bank check with you. Yeah, bring the bank check. Um, you can do cashier's check, certified check, electronic transfer, money order, you know, the list goes on. All of them work. Yeah. So let me emphasize something. Um, if the finance man is giving you a big problem over paying cash, it's because you gave up way too much control from the time you walked in the door. 
I, I totally agree. Yep. Everyone talks, you know, everyone talks in the process, but mm -hmm. when they clearly know that you're the boss in your own car deal, you get treated differently. That's funny that you said that because <laughs> when you did the cash buyer negotiations and a couple of those people were saying, Elizabeth is the boss. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> so anything else you want to add? Uh, yes. Everyone should be watching the homework guy videos. Um, the behind the scenes team that works on all these is amazing and I'm, I'm proud to be a part of it. And many of us do the research and comb through the content. You're the obvious face of all this, Kevin, but it's mm -hmm. it's not one person's opinion here. I've done hundreds of car deals and some of the contributors have 30 plus years of experience. Right. Um, great people from all around the country help with what we do. So watch the videos, do your homework, be prepared, stay in control from beginning to end and you'll actually be just fine. Well, okay, well, let me add this though. Promise yourself that you never wake up one day and say, I'm gonna go car shopping and then head straight to the dealership. Um, without your homework being done, you're just asking for trouble. Right. So I don't stop there unprepared. You don't shop unprepared. None of us do. Heck, I read a grocery list so I don't come home with too much stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> so nobody should be cutting and corners. And we're the pros at this and we don't cut corners on our homework. Yeah, exactly. Yep. All right. Well, thanks for doing this and let's see what our viewers think. Uh, do you want to see a lot more of Elizabeth coming up in the future? <laughs> I think the answer is probably yes. There you have it. Protect your plans of paying cash until the very end. Don't let anyone bully you in the process. Get yourself an amazing cash deal and use any of the methods from personal check to debit card, business check, bank check, certified check, money order, and electronic transfer of funds. The many different ways to pay cash. You don't have to have cash in hand to do this. If you appreciate the video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on any of your favorite social media platforms out there.